My name is Ian Richardson and I'm going to take you through some of the features of HEVC, High Efficiency Video Compression, the new standard from the people who brought you H.264 and the MPEG video compression standards. Let's start with some HEVC video. I'm using the Osmo player here. Playback isn't going to look too good on your screens because I'm capturing my display, but you get the general idea. Let's stop that. And I'm going to use an analyzer program to look inside this sequence. This is a program called HEVC Analyzer from a company called Elicard. So I will start by opening that clip up in the analyzer. You can see in the main window you have a frame from the clip. At the top here we have a chart showing the relative sizes of each coded frame. So what I'm going to do is turn on partitions and you can see that this frame has been split up into a lot of squares and rectangles. The large squares are 64 pixels to a side and these are called coding tree units or CTUs. These are the basic units of an HEVC codec similar to the macro blocks that we used in H.264. You'll see that some of the CTUs are split up further. So this example here is split up into four quarters and then one of those quarters is split up into four again. And sometimes we get very complicated uh, further splitting in these CTUs here. So the splitting is done on what's known as a quad tree. So we split into quarters, into quarters again, and so on. And the encoder tends to choose the splits to match the scene content. So where we've got the edges of objects or a lot of detail or a lot of movement, we tend to get lots of splits, lots of smaller units of coding where we have large flat areas or where there's not much changing from one frame to the next, the encoder will tend to use larger sizes of coding units. So let's look at prediction. If I turn on, if I first of all go back to the first frame and then turn on types, we'll see that there's a red overlay. Red means intra prediction. So every coding unit in this first frame is predicted spatially from other data within the same frame. I'll just turn that on off for a moment and we'll look at the prediction. So each of the blocks in the prediction is uh, predicted using averaging or extrapolation and you can see it, it makes a reasonably good job of predicting every one of the blocks. It's not quite the same as the original but it's fairly close and if we look at the residual, this is the difference between the original and the prediction. And most of the time it's black, which means there's virtually no information left after prediction. Round about the edges of the, uh, the, the, the two people or the detailed areas, the prediction is not so good and we have information left. Now if we look at a more complicated example. I'll go to this frame here, frame 16, and turn on the types. And you can see that we have a mixture of different prediction types going on. Each one's indicated by a different colored overlay. No overlay, such as this area here, means that the block or the, the coding unit is skipped. There's no movement, there's nothing changing, so the encoder simply copies CTU from the previous frame, one of the previous frames. Some of the areas are red, I'll put partitions on as well, so in some parts of the frame the encoder has chosen to use intra-prediction to predict each of the coding units or the prediction units from neighboring pixels in the same frame. Some areas we have Blue and blue means prediction from one source, that's like P prediction. And then green means that we're using bi directional prediction from two previously coded frames. So you can see the encoder has chosen a lot of different prediction block sizes or prediction unit sizes, and 
a lot of different modes and again you can see that the uh, most complicated and the smallest block sizes tend to occur around about the edges of moving objects. So all the time the encoder is choosing the block sizes, the modes, the type of prediction to try and get the best possible trade-off between compression and picture quality. Now let's go back to that first frame, that intra frame. If we look at the residual again, remember that the residual is what's left after we subtract the prediction from the original frame. All of these pieces of information, these, these uh, values, have to be transmitted. So these are transformed using a variation of the discrete cosine transform or the discrete sine transform, quantized, and then the quantized coefficients, along with all of the information about uh, the prediction modes, about any motion vectors, any types of prediction, all of that is coded using context adaptive binary arithmetic coding or CABAC. And if we turn on the sizes, we can see the number of bits that are actually sent for each of the blocks. So in this intra frame, most of the bits are required around more detailed areas and edges in the scene. And if we look at an inter frame, we see that pretty much everything that's sent is around the edges of the moving areas, which are the, the, the two women in the scene. So I hope you've enjoyed this uh, tutorial, found it interesting. If you look at my website, www.vcodex.com, I have a whole series of tutorials and guides on HEVC and on other types of video compression. Thanks a lot for watching.